Two weeks ago, we set the world record with a C7 with the Gen 5 power plant with the LT motor. We went at 8.0 at 170 miles an hour, which is absolutely crazy for a full weight street car that you can hop in and drive around town. Our goal is to go a 7.99 or quicker. So we decided to pull the heads to check the head gaskets and everything on it. Um, as you can see, we were running the factory LT1 intake on it at the time when we went the 8.0. Uh, we also were running the factory LT1 casting cylinder heads that were CNC'd. Uh, we changed the exhaust valves, put a stainless exhaust valve in it. Um, the bad news is we were trying to do a quick maintenance on this thing, put it back together for Holly Fest when we found out, thanks to our guys at Late Model Engines, that we cracked the ports on these cylinder heads. I know it's probably hard to see, but there's a port on every exhaust and intake where you can see small little cracks. And over time, guys, these cylinder heads, obviously the castings, uh, they have core shifts. They're not all the exact same. GM built, you know, millions of these cylinder heads. So we're obviously now starting to find the weak link, uh, whether it's the block or the cylinder heads or whatnot. And this is probably our fourth or fifth set of LT1 heads that we found cracked. We were literally planning on just doing basic maintenance on it, putting it back together, and uh, having it ready for next week for Holly Fest. Well, we got the bad news this morning about the cylinder heads being cracked and LME. Thanks again, Brian and Pecos came to the rescue. We now have a new set of cylinder heads ported, CNC'd by LME, new valve springs, titanium retainers, and we also did the new valves as well. And they also supplied us with the new billet intake manifold that is already plumbed for the port injection, which we are not running at the moment, and we won't be running it at Hollyfest with this, so we will just plug it with an injector for now. Um, so the old combination is still a stock casting head. Uh, the main difference gonna be now is we're going back with head studs instead of factory head bolts, which is what we had in it again when we ran our record setting pass with that 80 at 170 head studs will help hopefully keep the heads on there and keep the head gaskets happy and uh, we'll see if this new intake manifold will pick us up a little bit of power see if we can get that 790 out of it as you can see guys it's not that complex of a setup obviously before with the stock intake and everything on it it really was a very simple you know our LMR 1000 horsepower package uh, with the addition of a air to water intercooler and a few other you know, little goodies that we changed up on it. But it's still a one and seven eight stainless steel header from American Racing, uh, cam motion camshaft, and an LME 416 short block. Uh, Nitrous Express helped us out with a little single nozzle on it for an extra 150. We might even up jet it to a 200 shot come Holly Fest if, uh, if it's still going eight O's to try and get us in the sevens. As you can see guys, the interior uh, of the C7 is still all factory like the way it came from the dealership obviously with the change of the shifter from the power glide conversion we did um, but on the eight second pass we ran with the 80 170 it still had the factory leather seats in it uh, again all the functions work like the factory you got the radio AC power steering uh, factory carpet still in it um, obviously just the nitrous bottle brackets in the back is in the ice tank is what's changed. Uh, this setup has a custom air to water, uh, thanks to my friend Aldo. Hooked us up with our ice tank, and he also hooked us up with the actual intercooler for itself. And then the guys here in the shop welded up all the cold piping. Again, time is of the essence, so we'll see exactly what we change and how much we change, or how much we add, I should say, to try and get that little bit more power out of it for that seven second time slip. But I really do think if uh, everything we're doing here with that intake manifold helps just a little bit and if we have to up jet a little bit or even spin the blower a little bit harder, uh, as long as the air is good there in Kentucky, I think a 790 is not out of reach by any means. You can't question the limits of this stuff. Obviously in racing, no matter whether you buy the best of the best or what, obviously stuff can still break. And as you can see, we're starting to find out 
uh, refining the limits, I should say, of some of these factory GM parts. So eventually, aftermarket blocks and aftermarket heads are going to be needed when we start making the 1500 plus rural horsepower on these cars. Going sevens, deep in the sevens, or even eventually high sixes, which I do think will be in the next year. Uh, we'll try and get a little bit more filming of it so you can actually see uh, what it looks like under the hood once it's complete. Hopefully y'all can come check us out at Bowling Green, Kentucky and witness in person the first Gen 5 C7 running a 7 second pass down the quarter mile. And it is a full weight street club. See you guys there.